What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ, where this latter day saint in the flesh, sitting in his own stool and urine, praising the Lord for the Holy Spirit and for those that provided provisions for him to be sitting in his own stool and urine. Due to lack of public interest, I will not be talking about the void because the public does not or displays lack of interest in spiritual things. So I will not teach them the void. What they will get instead is the revealed scriptures of the doctrines of St. Paul and Jesus Christ. Now, this whole ministry, as Brother Paul says, is based off of 2 Corinthians. See, there's another revelation I want to tell people. If they think that was a, there was a St. Paul walking around, you know what? St. Paul's the champion of this doctrine. The champion. And he's a champion amongst quote-unquote mortals. Because he was shipwrecked, beaten, stoned, thrown into jail, had to fight against his own Jewish people, trying to steal from him, thief from him. He had to run around old Europe to spread and preach the gospel under much peril, duress, and dangers. That's why he's the champion of this gospel. And amongst mortals, his feats and tales, his transcendental pastimes will not be rivaled only by the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But at the same time, St. Paul... See, so he, he gave us the mystery. 2 Corinthians 13. Do you not know that Jesus Christ is in you? He gave you the mystery to this doctrine. And it wasn't St. Paul walking around. It was Jesus Christ. So he understood what God gave him. And he understood what his mission was in life. 2 Corinthians uh, 13, verse 5. Test yourselves to see whether you're living in the faith. Examine yourselves. Perhaps you yourselves don't realize that Jesus Christ is in you. Unless, of course, you've been a corrupt politician fornicating about. And here we go. The mission of the Master is uh, Matthew chapter 10. Don't suppose that my mission on earth is to spread peace. My mission is not to spread peace, but division. I've come to set men at odds with his father, mother, daughter, in short, to make man's enemies those of his own household. He who will not take up his cross and come after me is not worthy of me. He who seeks only himself, like the corrupt politicians, bring themselves to ruin. Whereas he who brings himself to nothing, for me, discovers who he is. And that's going to the Father, going to the I, the great I am within you. I explained about prayer, but due to lack of interest, we won't be explaining too much. Come to me, verse 28, all who are weary and find life burdensome. And take my yoke upon your shoulders and learn from me. So how are you going to do that? Well, you got to follow scriptures and hopefully worship a spiritual teacher. That's also what it says in Bhagavad Gita. So if you ain't doing those things, it might be pretty difficult to come to me. But either way, what you receive is the peace. The peace not that the world gives, but my peace, the comforter. John chapter 14. So if you are struggling in life, don't worry. The Father's there with you with the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name and will instruct you in everything and remind you that of all that I told you, my peace is my gift to you. I do not give peace as the world gives peace. But don't be distressed or fearful. You have me by my side. So we'll get on with the teachings of St. Paul. But first, <clears throat> I like to go to my one of my favorite uh, moments in the Bible when uh, St. Paul went to the Greeks in Acts 17 and uh, he he enlightened the Greeks as well too because of their idolatry and statues all over the place so chapter 17 will start St. Paul came to Thelos Thelos where there was a Jewish synagogue following his custom Paul joined the people there and and conducted discussions with them about the scriptures for three Sabbaths, so three Sundays. He explained many things, showing them that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I'm telling you about is the Messiah. Some of the Jews were convinced and threw in their lot with Paul. So too did a great number of Greeks sympathetic to Judaism and numerous prominent women. This only aroused the resentment of the Jews who engaged loafers from the public square to form a mob and start a riot in the town. 
They marched on the house of Jason and attempted to bring Paul and Silas before the people's assembly. When they could not find them, they were dragged Jason himself and some of the brothers to their own magistrates, shouting, These men have been cheating a disturbance. These men have been creating a disturbance all over the place. And now they come here. And Jason has taken them to a man they discarded as the emperor's decrees and claimed instead that a certain Jesus is king. In this way, they stirred up the crowd. When the town's magistrates heard the whole story, they released Jason and the others on bail. Now, this is when Paul's in Athens, verse 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he grew, he grew anxious at the sight of all the idols everywhere in the city. In the synagogue, he used to hold discussions with the Jews and about those sympathetic to Judaism, as well as daily debates in the public squares with ordinary passerby. Epicurean and Stoic philosophers disputed with him. So these are people that like, follow like Marcus Aurelius. Well, even before that, actually, this is <laughs> this is even the time of the well, it is the time of the Romans, but he's still in Athens. Either way, he's arguing with uh, Stoic philosophers in the synagogues. What is this magpie trying to say to us? Others commanded. <laughs> they called Brother Paul a magpie. He sounded like a promoter of foreign gods because he was heard to speak of Jesus and the resurrection. Then they led him off to Areopagus, saying, We are curious to know what this new teaching is that you propose. You're introducing subjects unfamiliar to us, and we should know to and we should like to know what this is all about. Indeed, all of Athens citizens as well as the foreigners who live there love nothing more than to tell about or listen to something new. Then Paul stood up in Areopagus and delivered his, this address. Men of Athens, I note that in every respect you're very scrupulous religious. As I walked around and looking for your shrines, I even discovered an altar inscribed to an unknown god. Now that you are the, now what you are worshiping in ignorance, I will make to you, I will make known to you. For the God who made the world and all that is in it. The Lord, heaven, and the earth does not dwell in sanctuaries made by human hands. Nor does he receive man's service as if he were in need of it. Rather, it is he who gives to all life and breath and everything else. From one stock he made every nation of mankind to dwell in the face of the earth. It is he who sets limits to their epochs and fixed the boundaries of their religions. They were to seek God, yes, to grope for him, and perhaps eventually to find him. Though he is not really far off, he's not far away from any one of us. In him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own po poets have put it. For we too are his offspring. In fact, God's offspring, we ought not to think of divinity as something like a statue of gold or silver, a product of man's genius of his art. This is where you're talking about like uh, alchemy and the occult and stuff like that. So the Greeks knew of things of this nature and they were attributing divine intelligence to objects. God may well have overlooked bygone periods when men did not know him, but now he call calls on all men everywhere to reform their lives. He has set the day on which he is going to judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed, one who he has endorsed in the sight of all by raising him from the dead. That's Jesus Christ. So when some of the some of the people of the town heard about that, they weren't too pleased. Some of them believed and some of them didn't. So Brother Paul always talks about the resurrection of Christ as well, too. He glorifies the resurrection. And this is what some of the false Christians in the world that go to church, they just worship the blood of the cross. They don't worship the resurrection of him being raised up to the glory of God. And that is our salvation. The power of God made known on earth through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is the mystery of the gospel. So Romans 1. Greetings from Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle and set apart to proclaim the gospel of God, which he promised long ago through his prophets, as the Holy Scriptures record, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh. Yeah, so that uh, old David, Solomon and David, that David, the house of David is where the tribe of or the Lion of Judah comes from, and that's Jesus Christ. But he was made Son of God in power, according to the Spirit of Holiness, and by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, 
Through him we have been favored with apostleship, that we may spread his name and bring to obedient faith all the Gentiles, among who, are, who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome, beloved of God and called to holiness, grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I give thanks to God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is heralded throughout the world. The God I worship in the Spirit by preaching the gospel of His Son will bear witness that I constantly mention you in my prayers, always pleading that somehow by God's will I may at last find my clear way to visit you. For I long to see you and share with you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. Rather, what I wish is that we may be mutually encouraged by our common faith. My brothers, I want you to know that I have often planted, I've often planned to visit you in order to do some fruitful work among you as I have among the other Gentiles. I am in, I'm under obligation to Greeks and non-Greeks, to learned and unintelligible men alike. That is why I'm eager to preach the gospel to you as Romans as well. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God leading anyone who believes in it to salvation, the Jews first, then the Greek. For in the gospel it is revealed the justice of God, which begins and ends with faith. As scripture says, the just man shall live by faith. Verse 28. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against the ill-religious and perverse in spirit of men. Who in, this per, who in this perversity of their hearts hinder the truth. In fact, whatever can be known about God is clear to them, but he himself made it so. Since the creation of the world, invisible realities, God's eternal power and divinity have become visible, recognized through the things he's made. Therefore, these men are inexcusable. They certainly had knowledge of God, yet they did not glorify him as God. Or give him thanks. They hid themselves through speculation to no purpose, and their senseless hearts were darkened. They claimed to be wise, but turned to be fools instead. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for the wages representing mortal man, birds, for the images representing mortal man, birds, snakes, idols. In consequence, God delivered them up in their lusts to unclean, unclean practices. They engaged in mutual degradation of their bodies. These men who engaged in the truth of God for a who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator. Blessed He forever be, Amen. God therefore delivered them up to a disgraceful passions. Their women exchanged natural intercourse for the unnatural. And the men gave up natural intercourse with women and burned with lust for one another. Men did shameful things with men and thus received in their own persons the penalty of their own perversity. They did not see it fit to acknowledge God, so God delivered them up to their own depraved sense to do so unseemingly. They are filled with every kind of wickedness, maliciousness, greed, ill, greed, ill will, envy, murder, bickering, deceit, craftiness. See all these things that the Bhagavad Gita says you're going to hell for. <laughs> They're gossips. Another thing too. Slanders. They hate God. Are insolent, haughty, boastful. All of these things the Lord sends them to hell for. Ingenious for their wrongdoing and rebellious toward their parents. One sees in them men without conscience, without loyalty, without affection, without pity. They know God's just decree that all who do such things deserve death. Yet that not only do they do them, but approve of them in others, this lewd behavior. It's always propagated by others as well. Chapter 2, God's just judgment. That is why every one of you who judges one another is inexcusable. By your judgment you convict yourself, since you do the very same things. In this teaching, when I... Po uh, point out people it's not pointing out their faults I don't criticize people what I do is say this is the path that you're going to be on it's like when you drive down the street with your daughter in your car and you point out a teenage girl that's pregnant 
and you're like, hey, do you want to be on that path? Because that's where that path is going to lead you if you start whoring around at a young age. Yeah, we're not criticizing the pregnant mother who's 13 or 14 years old. We're just showing the excuse and the example that these people lead by their ill religion. And we're trying to show you that if you lead this life, you're going to end up just like them. Insane, or often or not, just going to hell anyways. So we don't judge people. In my, in my mind, I'm not a weatherman. I, I stick to the rules. When I pray, there is no people in my mind. <laughs> the only thing I outline with people is if you are corrupt, a liar, a fornicator, an adulterer, a murderer, then you go to hell for these things. You don't just get away with it because you're a corporate entity and you have money and you can manipulate the justice system. See, that's man's way. And we're here preaching against man's way because man has fallen far from the way of God, which is why men have created so much iniquity amongst themselves. Well, we'll finish up chapter two here. We're closing up on the 20 minute mark. That is why every one of you who judges one another is inexcusable. But by your judgment, you convict yourself since you do the very same things. If you look at others and then you learn from their mistakes and not do them, that's not judging others. That's learning from other people's mistakes and making sure that you don't do those things and make sure that your butt is squeaky clean. We know that God's judgment on men who do such things is just. Do you suppose that then you will escape his judgment? You who condemn these things in others, yet do them yourself. Or do you presume on this kindness and forbearance? Do you not know that God's kindness is an invitation to you to repent? In spite of this, your, he your hard and impotent heart is storing up retribution for the day of wrath when the judgment of God will be revealed. When he will repay every man for what he does. Eternal life to those who strive for glory, honor, and immortality by patiently doing right. Wrath and fury to those who selfishly disobey the truth and obey wickedness. Yes, affliction, affliction and anguish will come upon every man who has done evil. The Jews first and then the Gentiles. But there will be glory, honor, and peace for everyone who's done good. Likewise, the Jews first and then the Gentiles. With God, there is no favoritism. God doesn't play favorites at all. Verse 12, sinners who do not have the law will perish without it. Sinners bound by the law will be judged in accordance with it. This is why Brother Paul talks about the law. It's the contaminated consciousness, the false ego, who is under the three modes of material nature. And that path of liberation is now being under grace of God, that secret mode of living. So that's what he's talking about, the law. It's not just the law of Moses. It's also the law of quote-unquote nature. For it's not those who hear the law who are just in the sight of God. It is those who keep it who will be declared just. When Gentiles who do not have the law keep it by its instinct, common sense, common sense kind of tells you not to do things as well too. I was guided a lot by common sense, which is why the Lord gave me a lot of light. But I made mistakes in this world. It's not enough. You have to be taught. That's why you have to worship a spiritual teacher, as it says in Bhagavad Gita, or else one can d develop his own way. And usually fornication is what the basic instinct of man is. And all he wants to do is fornicate around. So I was at that point, too, where what do I do with my life? Let's just get a girl. Get a girlfriend. What a <laughs> no. For it's not those who hear the law or are just in the sight of God. When Gentiles who, don't, who do not have the law keep it by instinct, these men, although without the law, serve the law as for themselves. They show that the demands of the law are written in their hearts. So that's what the covenant of the Lord was, to the, uh, his second covenant to the Jewish people. Was instinctually, people know what good is. Your consciousness doesn't lie to you, but people go against their own consciousness like I did when my consciousness was screaming at me not to be with these people. I went against myself, you can see, because I didn't know that that thing screaming at me is God. 
Their conscience bears witness together with the law, and their thoughts will accuse or defeat them. On the day when, in accordance with the gospel I preach, God will pass judgment on the secrets of men through Jesus Christ. A lot of secrets of men are being exposed, if you didn't notice. Bill Cosby. Who else? I mean, there's just too many guys. That's another example. Too many people are getting exposed. Secrets exposed. Let us suppose you bear the name of Jew, and you rely firmly on the law, and pride yourself on God. Instructed by the law, you know this, you know his will, and are able to make sound judgments on disputed points. You feel certain that you can guide the blind and enlighten those in darkness, that you can discipline the foolish and teach the simple. Because in the law, you have a hand, a clear pattern of truth and knowledge. Now then, teacher of others, are you failing to teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? I've been celibate for the past six, seven years. I don't know what women look like anymore. I've been reading so much scripture. I've, they're like mystical creatures to me, Lord. I read about them in books and I see them in TVs and video games. But I've never seen one in about six or seven years now. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm not preaching adultery, steal. I don't do those things, Lord. You chastised me greatly, Lord, for adultery that I once committed. Yes, Lord, just like Brother Paul says, as he was persecuting your Christians, Lord, he was murdering people, and you reformed him as well, just like you reformed me. I was once a sinner, an adulterer, and it only happened, I didn't, me, I slept with like a handful of people too, I'm not a super smash brother, I ha literally a fucking handful, and that's all it takes in this world. So that's what I'm trying to say. Like He's saying this too. Because I have a big mouth and preach, I don't do the things anymore that I did that caused me pain and misery. And that includes... You want to get a little personal about that adultery part too. My ex-girlfriend tried to come back. And she's the one that married her husband and left because she's disobedient anyways. And that is a, a, to the master and his teaching. Anybody that divorces their <coughs> husband or wife that their husband or wife didn't commit adultery or didn't beat them up, they have no, they can't divorce them. See, in this world, like I said, you can divorce whatever the fuck you want, doesn't matter. Well, I just met some broad in life that divorced her husband. And just because I was with her, I committed adultery. How did I, I didn't read the, see, the doctrine wasn't given to me until the year 2022. So when the ex tries to come back, I'm like, fuck no. Fuck no. No, 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 no way. I ain't committing any adultery with you, bruh. Why? Because the Lord opened up my freaking eyes. And I'll never do those things again because there is a creator of the universe. And I don't feel like going to fucking hell for just fornicating around. No fucking thank you. See, you who forbid adultery, do you commit adultery? Fuck no! I ain't never doing that. I would just rather chop my fucking dick off. Just like it says, the master says, if your eye is causing you to stumble, pluck it out. If your hands are causing you to steal, chop it off. It's better for you to come in this life maimed and destroyed than for you to cause sin and go to hell. That's also in scripture. Luckily, I practice self-control. I don't have to chop it off. Now, again, Scripture says on your account, the name of God is held in contempt among the Gentiles. Ah, that's too bad for the Gentile. Circumcision, to be sure, has value if you observe the law. But if you break it, you might as well be uncircumcised. Brother Paul, 26. Again, if an uncircumcised person keeps the precepts of the law... He will not be considered circumcised. If a man who is uncircumcised keeps the law, he will pass judgment on you, who with your written law and circumcision break it. Yeah, a guy that's uncircumcised and following the law, he'll call out someone that is circumcised and breaking the law. So what does his circumcision do? Nothing. That's why Brother Paul and his 
teaching as well too doesn't preach circumcision anymore you don't need to do that that's an old covenant even from the old testament and the lord writ his new covenant on the hearts of the people even in the old testament but they still were circumcising people that's an unnecessary custom you don't have to circumcise anybody that's an unnecessary custom that was something that the lord gave the people first but then they disobeyed the lord so much the lord renewed the covenant with israel and wrote what your consciousness is on your heart and on your mind and what you got to do in this life that's why brother paul preaches not circumcised that's why brother paul's teachings aren't really really taught because the catholics are snipping and the muslims are snipping why because they follow the jews rules of circum the law and brother paul's telling you if you don't follow the law you're freaking condemned if you don't follow the law and you're circumcised what's your circumcision going to avail you that's what he also preaches as well too thank the lord my parents had common sense and they were hearing other babies screaming and crying because they're getting circumcision my mom's like no maybe we shouldn't do it to this fucking guy chop half his balls off so he could fucking cry like an asshole in fucking prison hospital you, those are unnecessary customs and there's the thing about my ex too because she was fucking muslim when she wasn't she's just an ignorant desert arab she wanted me to get circumcised for her fucking beliefs and that's when i told her to get the fuck out of my house straight up <laughs> that's why i uh, i have an ex because I told this fucking broad to get the fuck out of here so many times with her stupid beliefs. <laughs> and I don't even... I apologize for this shit, but... At the same time, that's the fucking audacity. You're gonna tell me? And this, this is when I was like the master of the occult. I'm fucking reading Aleister Crowley, and you're bothering me about fucking religion that you don't understand? You're gonna tell me to chop my half my fucking balls off for you? That's when I told her to get the fuck out of here. And that's straight up I that literally she's told me that the next thing I said was it was like an immediate response or something I don't know what the fuck it just get the fuck out of my house thank you guys again if you don't have those convictions for yourself that's why men are whipped they treat you like fucking pigs because you don't have any balls thanks a lot take care